I will never feel like I'm strong enough. My wrist is still gone. He gets again his wrist buckles and I make a bad error here. What's up guys, Monster Michael Todd here. In today's video, I'm reviewing my match with Gennady Quigvenia from East vs. West 2. All right guys, we're gonna start off from the beginning of this. Obviously this match did not work out very well for me. Hopefully I can watch this, pick up on mistakes I made or things I might need to work on between now and this rematch with Gennady. But let's see how it goes. Here we are, first setup. He's wanting to get up a little high on my knuckle in this setup. But everything right now, I mean, I think I'm feeling confident, look good. Obviously I expect us to slip. Think we're about to get a start here? Okay, maybe not. <laughs> They're trying to straighten my bone. They're like, straighten your wrist, straighten your wrist. I'm like, that's my bone. All right, let's see how this goes. Oh, false start, but he hit me over pretty far, but I still was able to get out from underneath it. Let's see how this next, next start goes. Perfect slip, aggressive. All right, so I have the buckle on my side, and I think this is where I'm asking for a tighter strap, and um, Aristo says that's as tight as we can go. So that was a little bit of an unexpected hiccup, right? Because I was hoping to get a really cinched down tight strap. I've now noticed that I'm not getting those very often at East versus West, so I've been practicing with a looser strap. He definitely has a higher knuckle than me in the setup. I've got to work on that. Yeah, I tried to get a tighter strap, and he's like, this, that's as tight as it's going to go. All right, he's still humming. I'll come complain about that. Getting down a little bit, but it looks like he still has a higher top knuckle. Okay, they just gave Gennady a foul. We're not, not coming off the knuckle. Here we go, I think. All right, so I've got the good start. Oh, and he hits sideways, and I get confident because his wrist buckle's back. But then I make no movements, and he starts climbing my hand. So I, I look like I'm in a good position, but I'm not climbing. And he's climbing up through the strap, getting higher in my hand. Because I'm used to pulling the tighter strap, so when I have a tighter strap that buckles my opponent's wrist more. He's getting real confident. I surge back. My wrist is still gone. He hits again his wrist buckles. But I'm off my arm. He, he has, at this point, he has more of this strength than I do. And I'm out here. Now he's, he's cupping me really well. He's so far out of my hand. Yeah, I'm, 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 he's gripping here and here. So this is just bad arm wrestling on my part like I didn't climb now I try to come into press I think he might try to pin me yep so he saw me starting to transition and he pinned hard sideways so the start of the match looks good the start of the match looks like I'm doing the right stuff it's just I don't climb one time not one time do I initiate any type of open my hand to try to regrip and he's steadily walking up ends up cupping me out of my hand so his cup defeats my pronation because of the angle he gets on my above my top knuckle. So he does everything right. A lot of position gain right there. So I do think I had somewhat of a compromise riser and pronation because that's when I had all the nerve damage and stuff. And although I came into this healthy, I still just think I had a few areas that weren't optimal for me at the time. I think I spent a lot of time in this recovery focusing on those areas. But I still think for this match to go the way I want it to go, which is a dominating win for me I'm gonna to have to have more center of the table control because you will notice his ability to just surge and just hit this sideways position we're starting round two I watched this briefly the other day and I make a bad error here it should have been a more taxing round on him and he ends up getting a fast pin I believe but let's see what happens here we're outside the strap no referee grip thumbs up okay pretty even slip hand up a uh, hand dropped, he ended up grabbing my fingers and we still slipped out. So if you were to say he probably had the better position in the slip, this is the error coming up right now. All right. So the strap has been applied. Buckles on his hand. He doesn't want it as tight as I want it. I want it tighter. He's like, no, it's okay, it's okay. Because they know that for my king's move at the time to work, the tighter the strap, the better I'm going to be. Because as I'm pronating, if you have a tight strap, it actually forces my opponent's wrist backwards. I'm used to pulling my wrist compromised and backwards while engaging my pronation. Most arm wrestlers are really only strong from here forward. So once they get their wrist back, they don't like it. And a lot of people kind of figured out, if you just don't get a tight strap, I can't get the same connection. Okay, so right here, I don't make the error yet. I've almost got his wrist. I mean, his wrist has been back. My wrist has been back. 
and he's just hitting those really hard sideways surges. And I'm off my arm pretty far. And he is talking a lot of smack, right? But he is hitting hard sideways. I don't, I think right now at my current strength, I can, I can hold those hits much better. But I'm not comfortable going in where I'm at right now. I plan on being stronger. You know, 10% stronger than where I was when I pulled Camille. But you're seeing these, he is very strong with that side pressure hit. Very comfortable. I'm never getting his hand out past his shoulder, which is something I have to be able to do. And he's got my wrist compromised. And he's climbing in, climbing in. I think there's going to be an elbow foul or something's going to happen. Before. I think he gets a pin, but there's a foul first. Okay, elbow foul on me. As we know, I didn't win this one, but I'm betting I'm winning the rematch. Now, I know a lot of you guys like to bet on arm wrestling, but check out this cool promotion from mybookie.com. You know they have this weekly risk-free Thursday promotion going on? If your bet hits, you win big. If it doesn't, my bookie will refund your money. Well, that sounds like a no-brainer to me. Oh, man, my back's still. I'm going to have to roll this thing out. And on top of that, my bookie will literally give you free money for every deposit you make. If you use my promo code MONSTERTOD, and the more you deposit, the bigger your bonus will be. It's super easy to make a deposit on credit cards. And if you're not old and broken down like me and use that crypto, you can even do it that way as well. And the best thing about it, it's super easy and takes no time at all. You can do it in between your sets while you're working out. You can literally bet on anything, anywhere, at any time with my book. Except arm wrestling. So I have one elbow foul. Gennady's extremely confident. This is where the air comes in. I think that I have put enough wear on his arm to where I can drive him to press. I was mistaken. <laughs> this this ends up looking pretty bad for me right here. I'm setting up. It looks like I'm setting up to press. I know I'm setting up to press. I'm way low on his knuckle. He's still significantly higher than me in the setup. And I hit and don't go anywhere. And then as I'm trying to come out, he gets, this, gets the side pressure pin. So now I'm down 2-0 with my hand and wrist already being pumped and compromised. And I was a heavy favorite going into this match. And I think it was because Gennady had recently lost to Ermes at the time and Ermes took his wrist. So I thought I was gonna take his wrist. We don't know what Gennady's gonna be like off this injury, off this recovery, off this new bicep he's gonna have. If he can get back to this form, if this is the Gennady that shows up and I can continue to progress the way I'm progressing, I think I would be in a position to, to have a very good performance. If Gennady shows up better than this, which if you look at the way my recovery's gone, some people say I'm stronger than I've ever been. Hey, Misha. Um, hey, buddy. But I don't think I'm stronger than I've ever been yet. I'm stronger in areas than I've ever been, but I wanna be stronger in every area because I think that's what it's gonna take to beat LeVon. I still like my chances a lot. I mean, Gennady, I think, would have to come in 10% stronger than this form to beat the version of me that I, that I hope to bring on November 2nd. Okay, I think I had an elbow foul that start that they didn't call, but we ended up starting to go slip. Still holding on by fingers, we both just decided to go to strap. So I think I have the riser, the pronation, pronation gauge back pressure. My cup is significantly improved. But I still think the areas that I need most improvement are going to be more cup and more center of the table control. And I think the biggest problem is I don't load. 95% of the time when I arm wrestle, I'm completely loose, playing the hit. And if you're completely loose and I'm hitting outside, that's fine. Completely loose shoulder pressing is okay too. But when you have someone who's rock solid right here in the center at that pressing, that kind of, this kind of pressure here, you got to find a way to get him past their shoulder. So here we are round three. I hit him out. He gets a cupped wrist and he's he's making sideways moves. Now I'm in a decent spot cons considering it's me. Me or Todd Hutchins both would be in good spots from here. <laughs> Rest of the world maybe not. Um, but he's hitting sideways and his wrist is starting to buckle. Like and I'm talking to him, he's talking back. Well he's the one doing talking, I'm talking back. <laughs> but he's hitting hard and he can't get the pin. And he's doing these little quick little hits but he's, he's back to climbing again, doing what he's supposed to do. Hey, Misha. <sighs> I'm in so much trouble here. I mean, I, I have a chance, there's a lane, but okay, he drives him with the press, his wrist gives up his wrist, and now he's got it. He actually, as he pins me, my elbow shoves off the side of the pad. 
yeah so that's that's all three rounds <laughs> that's all we have to review because it's just a three zero sweep by Gennady round two was my biggest mistake probably going for the press because I could have put more fatigue on him by just hitting outside and making him work making him work making him work but as we saw him versus uh Devin he has really good endurance I did have a little different approach going in on this one I just did maintenance weight workouts for like three or four months just so that I could come in healthy because I felt like I was probably strong enough but I just need to be healthy moving forward I will never feel like I'm strong enough I always need to be stronger so I won't ever take that approach again every camp the goal is to be stronger before I take the week's worth of, worth of rest the look you see isn't necessarily concern. I'm just trying to figure out what's the thing that I can do to get the most gains in the areas that I need to improve over the next eight weeks. I think my training programming has been on point. I've hit, I hit those very high pronation numbers and a pretty good um, riser number. The heaviest pronation gauge back pressure I had ever done. The heaviest cut for 50 reps I'd ever done. And then I, I came back Tested where I was at, which was higher than I'd ever been on all the lifts. And then I started the very next day by going back from 181.5 to 154, going from 125 back to 110. And then I went all the way down to, I don't even remember where I started at, maybe 150, 160, 170 or something like that with the uh, pronation gauge back pressure. And then all the way back to 120 for 50 on the uh, cupping. So we're two weeks in. I went up to 130 for 50 on cupping because I did a week at 120, a week at 125. The pronation gauge back pressure goes up every three days. It's at 531. Go up five pounds, 531. Roger goes up half a pound a day. Pronation goes up 0.75 a day. I think if I can just keep sticking to what I'm doing and keep seeing the gains. And this is the issue. A lot of people are saying, hey, we can have a practice. When do you want to when do you want to pull? And Corey comes twice a week. And at most, we're gonna maybe get on the table once a week just for a maybe just to fill things out because the problem is if we get on the table too much or if I get on the table too much like we had a big practice and I pulled for three hours and then the next day I missed a pronation lift I'm so invested in this programming and doing it right that I don't want to do anything that's gonna mess it up and the last the last prep went so well there may be one big practice I may do one practice because I think Lars is supposed to be coming here like the first of October or something first weekend of October, second weekend of October, something like that. What's up, Misha? You're on camera, buddy. He's checking himself out on the computer. So when Lars is here, maybe that Saturday, we will do a big practice. But that would be four weeks out. That would probably be the closest I'd be willing to have a big practice. And I don't think I want anything before then. Tell me your thoughts on the match with Gennady. Tell me what you think I need to work on. I'm not saying I'm gonna to adhere to your advice. I like my programming quite a bit, but I just wanna hear your thoughts. Have I improved since then? What version of Gennady are we gonna see? I think I'm gonna go ahead and review a lot of Gennady's matches over the next few weeks, three, four, five weeks. I'm taking this comeback very serious. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell for notifications.